I am Dr. Richard Caselli. Uh, I am a neurologist at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. And my main area of research is in the realm of preclinical Alzheimer's disease, particularly cognitive aging, uh, neuropsychological aspects. Uh, but I collaborate extensively uh, with a number of investigators, including Dr. Sabah, uh, who's with us today. Uh, and we uh, work on imaging and uh, genetics and pathology and so forth. I'm Dr. Marwan Sabah, I'm a geriatric neurologist and director of the Banner Sun Health Research Institute in Sun City, Arizona. My area of interest is clinical trials and clinical research related to Alzheimer's disease. I'm particularly excited this year uh, with regard to the push towards preclinical intervention, the uh, number of trials that are being developed uh, by some of our colleagues in Arizona, as well as others, such as the, uh, uh, the Diane uh, group, um, the idea of intervening before symptoms emerge, I think, is really where the field is heading. I think our initial trials looking at well-designed anti-amyloid agents have met with uh, disappointing results, and it's been thought, perhaps, that reflects too little too late. Well. Uh, I think two things have emerged very recently that tell us that despite those setbacks that we may actually be on the right track and I personally find that very encouraging. Uh, the first is a uh, report that came out just this week of a genetic mutation that actually reduces the risk for developing Alzheimer's disease, really quite a remarkable thing, occurring within the very same gene where a, wherein a different mutation will increase a person's risk dramatically to develop Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so it tells us that affecting this particular gene and the binding uh, of something called uh, uh, beta secretase or base 1 uh, really can make a difference. And there have been pharmacological trials uh, looking at base 1 uh, activity. And the other very exciting thing, in my opinion, as I mentioned earlier, is the notion of earlier intervention and the fact that these trials have moved from one of just theory to actual implementation at this point, and we're hearing more about that at this, at this meeting as well. Uh, the top line results on the two major phase three uh, anti-amyloid immunotherapy uh, trials are not being reported at this meeting. Uh, so the field in the therapeutics arena is waiting. Uh, perhaps the readout will be given this fall. The other areas of major development include the area of amyloid imaging, which has really come to its full maturity. All three compounds, fluorbeta peer, fluorbeta bain, and flutamatamol, uh, reported their uh, phase three results. Uh, fluorbeta peer having reported it before, but having additional uh, data show high levels of specificity and sensitivity and uh, all of them being, uh, being very accurately able to correlate uh, imaging findings to uh, pathological features. So these uh, products are now moving toward uh, uh, FDA approval with Fluorbetapyr already having it and uh, moving toward clinical implementation in clinical practice. Uh, these are uh, very encouraging because it could improve diagnostic certainty and diagnostic accuracy in the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, uh, reflecting upon the field where there is a interest in deploying uh, biomarkers in the clinical uh, uh, diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. However, uh, they are considered for the most part research, uh, uh, not uh, in clinic yet. Reflecting on what Dr. Caselli said, I think the other thing that's of uh, interest is the fact that there are other drugs in early development, uh, beta secretase inhibitors are starting to get some attention more so than they had in the past and there are uh, increasing uh, needs to reconsider anti-tau approaches and there are a few presentations in that regard. I would, I would just to like to pick up for a moment on, on the point Dr. Sabah made with regard to the uh, amyloid imaging uh, techniques. Uh, although uh, only one of them so far has come to the actual clinical practice, Florbetapyr, uh, they really do represent, I think, a remarkable opportunity for uh, diagnosis. And there are really two schools of thought in this regard. 
Uh, one school of thought is that, well, you know, in, in Alzheimer's disease isn't that hard to diagnose. We've got a lot of tests that are being run already. Will they simply run up the cost even further uh, for diagnostic evaluation? But I think that argument overlooks uh, a rather special subgroup of patients, which is the young patient. Uh, Dr. Sabah and I both uh, are clinical neurologists as well as researchers, and we occasionally will see patients who are still working, people in their uh, early 50s, whatnot. Um, many of these patients don't have a strong family ba uh, background of Alzheimer's, don't fit into the classic autosomal dominant uh, type of, of pattern, and become a little bit more of a diagnostic dilemma. Consider as well that these people usually don't wait until they're severely demented to seek uh, medical care, so they're mildly affected enough that the differential diagnosis often includes psychiatric problems. And many of these folks are told, well, you're just depressed or you're anxious, and, and, and it, their problems are, are dismissed, and yet they continue to have problems at work, and they really become eligible for disability if one can only establish that they in fact have an organic diagnosis. And I think that a scan like a Florbetapir or PET scan can provide that to them.